James, amazing job on this film. Man, what a way to go out on top, right? The Forever Purge is right there, <laughs> it, right there at the top of the purge level. Oh, but you know, it's, great, <laughs> it's crazy, man. When, when I saw the storming on Capitol Hill, I immediately thought of the purge and it really showed me that like anything can happen once rules are broken. Uh, yeah. And emigration is, was at the, at the forefront of, uh, of the issues here in the United States. Why was it that direction you wanted to go with the Forever Purge? You know, it was weird. Dude. I, I first conceived of Purge 5. Oddly, this is going to sound weird, but I wanted it to be a love story. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, yeah, I did. I was like, I want to do a crazy love story in the middle of Purge with these two people who love each other deeply. And 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 I wanted them, and, and you know, you come up with these fragments of thoughts in like half sleeping states. And I'm like, and I want them coming up from Mexico into America and exploring the American dream. And that was the initial idea. I was like, oh, and everybody's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? So this idea of, I guess, and listen, I mean, two and a half years ago when I wrote it, what was at the forefront of the news was the right. previous administration's policy on the border. Absolutely. So I think that was just informing my dreams. You know what I mean? So it's like, here I wanted to follow this couple, this beautiful couple exploring the American dream. And then this cyclical nature to the story where Mexico actually becomes the safe haven. Right. And we flip and everything on its head, you know? So, so yeah, so it started off, I think it's, listen, I think it was because two and a half years ago, we were in the middle of the, the, the new policy on the border sure. in the previous. Now, can, can you talk to me about the collaboration process with Jason Blum and Sebastian? I hope I get his last name right. Uh, Le, Le Messier. And I Le say Messier. that right? Le Messier. Le Messier. Perfect. Uh, You're perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because you, you've you been with them since the beginning. And uh, did yeah. you ever think that your what happened if one day pitch would uh, get you here at the oh. Forever Purge? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's so weird because it, I truly mean this. It, it's not even like there's no hyperbole to this. We wrote, so I had made a movie with Sebastian before that called, uh, we made two things together. I wrote Assault on Precinct 13 with Ethan Hawke that he produced. And then um, I wrote and directed another Ethan Hawke movie called Staten Island, New York, very small movie. Uh, we were really proud of, but it was tiny, playing in festivals, that kind of thing. And then we were like, oh, let's do another one together. And I wrote The Purge. And we both thought it was, he's like, I'll go try to raise a million bucks for it. We'll shoot it. It's very dark and disturbing. It'll play at the Angelica in New York, maybe LA at the Lemley or something like, and that's it. Like it could be a little <laughs> tiny, tiny little dark horror movie. Kind of like, we thought it was like a funny game. It's kind of like Michael Haneke. Right. And we were looking for money. And at some point, someone called me and said, hey, your old friend, your old friend Blum is making horror films. It was before, it was right around Paranormal uh, 1, I think. And I'm like, oh, I knew Jason from like 98 in right. New York. And um, so we showed it to Jason. I'll never forget, we show it to Jason and he's like, he didn't think what we thought. He's like, no, this has a bigger appeal, guys. This is this conceit is going to have a bigger. We're like, nah, it's too dark. It's too anti-American or whatever. It was just too dark. And um, he showed it to Universal. They saw what he saw, dude. And somehow here we are five. More. I don't. That's tru that, truly thought it was a tiny little film. I, I mean, see, you're such a soothsayer when it comes to things that, that are in this, because I feel like the, like all these social issues are right there in front of us. And, and you know, this is what this is what I love about The Purge, because it kind of talks about this, but this stuff. But James or uh, James, uh, Jason told me yesterday that uh, he wanted to do another Purge movie. He's going to let this one come out, let you get a little time. But he yeah. wants to do another one. Uh, do you think the Purge uh, franchise I mean, first of all, would you come back and do another one? Or do you think, you know, you're done with it? You want to move on to other things? Dude, I thought I was done. All honesty, I was done about four months ago. I thought it was over. I'm like, oh, it's over. We did it. We told our story. And then I woke up one day and I had an idea. And I was like, in a way, I was like, oh, shit. I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I called Sebastian and I pitched it to him. And he said the same thing. He's like, oh, shit, that's good. <laughs> and uh, we called Jason and he said the same thing. He's like, oh, my God. But he was he didn't say, oh, shit. He was just very excited. So, um. We, we then pitched it to Universal. They liked it too. So between you and I, I'm actually right now, uh, here's my, my cards where all my ideas are. No. On, the next, on the next one, dude. Yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, I have over 200, not, about 100 cards, I should say. Yeah, dude, outline. So, I cannot yeah. wait. That is <laughs> phenomenal. Thank, Thank you for you, sharing that. Yeah, another question I have for you. Look, I know that you and Alvarado, uh, uh, Valerio Gout, who was the director, mm -hmm. he really connected with this script. Can you talk to me about uh, what excited you about his approach? And I know you guys uh, shared a love of, of tequila on this uh, on this yes. set as well. Right? Can he tell you that? He tells you that too? Oh, it's funny. Yeah, yeah I've been telling that today too. Uh, we do. We love tequila and mezcal. Um, he's a great guy. What I'll tell you what hit it off, dude. He, so, you know, I wrote this foundation. I wrote this. I called the script the foundation or the blueprint. But obviously, you know, it's told from what even with all the research I could do about the Mexican perspective. I'm not Mexican. I, I recognize I'm Italian. Italian kid from Brooklyn, from Staten Island, Brooklyn. 
so I knew my perspective was limited and I'm like, we need someone who's going to, you know, get, just make this real, make it give, tell me, call it, call me out on the bullshit of my writing. Sure. If there is bullshit. And, and he did, he came in and it was great. He told me what he loved and he told me what was bullshit. He's like, dude, DeMonico, we don't talk like that. We would not talk about Texas the way you're talking about Texas in this scene. And I respected the honesty because that's what it needed, right? It needed to get to that place where, because that's what I can't stand collaborations where people are just yesing each other. I think that's sure, a terrible sure. place to get. And so he was very honest with me. I was honest with him. We'd argue. It was fun. It was invigorating. It was a real collaboration. So, and I think he brought something that I could never have brought to this specific story. Um, right. And uh, it was, yeah, it was great, man. He was great. Great. Dude. Look, this film is next level uh, for Purge fans are going to absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And I can't oh, wait great, for man. them to see it. And I can't wait to see what's in store next. James, oh, thank you so much. Hey, no, I hope you, you're on man. this franchise forever, my friend, because oh, I, I love watching them. So thanks. <laughs> so thank you, brother. 